think first of all, I, you know, you have to be happy in what you do and, and, and look at <laughs> uh, if this is going to be an attractive call. Uh, but I think it's more than that because I think there's lots of people that are, I mean, priests in general are pretty happy with, with being priests. Um, I think you, we have to be a little more uh, aggressive, a little more specific in inviting people that we see uh, that might be, might be good candidates even if they haven't seen it themselves. I, again, I think you're, you're the point of involving families in this idea, you know, people want priests, they just can't have a hard time imagining their sons being priests. And um, having that conversation, uh, encouraging that idea to at least be an open a possibility, I think is a great one. I try to reach them if I see like a desire in that person, that man, to be involved in parish uh, ministries, if I see they are men of prayer, if I see they are not like hanging around with women or, or just having a, a regular secular life, I, I may ask them, like, what is it that you want to be? Have you ever considered priesthood? Some say, yeah, actually, yes. And uh, try to follow up with, with those uh, men. Sometimes they are just very young, like 14, 15 year old uh, men. So I try to reach them personally if I see um, that they have some qualities uh, to consider the call to the priesthood. I try to engage people one-on-one -on -one who I think would perhaps respond, at least to a conversation. And sometimes that beginning conversation can lead to another conversation, which might lead to even taking part with the diocesan vocational programs. To demonstrate and, and share with people of all ages um, what priesthood is about, I think people don't necessarily know what we do other than what they see on Sunday or what they see in a crisis and uh, so to kind of engage people uh, in, in, in our story uh, what has called us to priesthood what has uh, kept us in priesthood uh, the opportunities to work with different you know with high school groups grammar school groups or college, you know any any group of, of, uh, of young people that can build the imagination about the possibility I think to really aim at preaching intently um, at least twice a year, encourage the families to talk to their children. Uh, different church events also, like I had, uh, I was in charge of the altar servers and I had monthly meetings with the parents. So talk to them and say, are you encouraging your children? You know? So do not to miss meetings and just for the sake of having the meetings, but we can also expand the purposes of our ministries and really promote vocations. When I was younger, I, was, uh, I think I was drawn to a little bit more of the casual priest. Uh, I grew up in the days when uh, there was a lot going on in different churches and it was the days of what we refer to as the groovy mass time. And, and for me, that was, that was helpful. I think that's what I was drawn to. What I find now is that young people are not drawn so much to that. They're drawn to uh, a little bit more of the formal, a little bit more of the traditional. They're looking for priests who are not just one of the guys. They're looking for priests who are serious about what they're all about. And I think to the extent that we can model that, we've got a better chance at drawing young men to the priesthood. The need to uh, expand the imagination about priesthood um, and to help people to see that as something they would want their children to do, their sons to do, their that, um, that a parish has a responsibility of calling people to priesthood. We have pre-baptismals with parents and godparents, and there we try to see the sacraments in a general way. And so we know marriage and um, priesthood or holy orders to sacraments. So we try to say to them, encourage your children. You know, you're going to baptize your children. Many of you have already other children. Have you talked to your children about considering priesthood? We know marriage is going down, and we know holy orders are going down too. But is it because priests are not talking to them, and probably because also parents are not really talking at home about these two sacraments? Being truly married in the church, if you are together with someone, and also considering priesthood as an option. Making that effort of checking in with guys is, is key. And it's a little bit awkward. You've got to be careful that you don't badger them. You know, they, 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 uh, 
they're skittish sometimes. Young, young men can be very skittish, and certainly kids in school can be skittish if they think they're getting uh, more attention than, than they're comfortable with. But I think not being afraid to talk to them. The guys that I've talked to here who are in their 20s and 30s, generally if I've brought it up to them, I'm not the first one who's done it. Others have done it when they were younger, and it just reinforces something. I think if enough priests talk to somebody over the course of a number of years, perhaps then that will strike something in them. I actually think that the, the atmosphere um, is probably a little better than it was perhaps in, in years past. I think people understand the need and um, I think there's a, uh, a certain sense of, of respect for the role of the priest in the midst of, of, uh, of an entire understanding of, of ministry, um, which I think has been, which has grown and so there's a, there's a better sense overall. And, Perhaps a more encouraging, maybe it's more encouraging for priests in the, in the situation that we find ourselves in today to in fact encourage people to be part of this. I see people of an age group that uh, they're a uh, devoted age group, people in their 20s and 30s, in my parish at least. Uh, I see people who are very much uh, in love with the church, people who want to come to know Christ better, people who want to serve. Uh, I've, I've got to believe that there's great reason for hope.